Hey runners, welcome back. My name is Ben and I'm a strength coach for runners. And today I'm going to show you one of the best sandbag exercises to build killer core strength, connect your upper and lower body, and build reactive strength that's going to make you both a more injury resilient and faster runner. So if you've ever been to a PT or a chiropractor or massage therapist, we like to talk about this concept that everything's connected. And usually we do this to explain to you why if you have pain in your knee, it might be caused by something like the ankle or the hip. But the phrase everything's connected doesn't really mean anything unless we talk about how it's connected. And one of the big hows in how the body is connected is in terms of diagonal chains. And here's what I mean by that. So our bodies are hardwired for walking and running, for gait, right? And every time we're involved in the gait cycle, our opposite limbs, our opposite arm and leg have to work together to produce efficient outcomes, right? So right arm, left leg, and vice versa, right arm, left leg. And that's why our bodies are designed to be connected diagonally. And they're connected diagon diagonally via something called the muscular slings or subsystems. So there's a couple different ones. The first is the anterior oblique subsystem, where our obliques, our abdominal muscles, connect with the abductors to help us do things like decelerate our body and resist rotation. And on the back side, we have things like the posterior oblique subsystem that also helps us do things like store elastic energy and resist rotation. So these are super important systems for movement. So we want our strength training to target these systems. And one of the great ways we do that is through something called lifts and chops. So here's what a lift and chop looks like. So I'm grabbing the outside edges of the ultimate sandbag. I'm gonna demo it this way to start. And I bring it across my body. Now what happens when I bring it across my body is those systems that are connected to my body diagonally, both in the front and in the back, are going to have to engage to resist the motion of the bag moving across my body at a diagonal. So every time I do a lift and chop, it strengthens all of these systems, which is why the lift and chop is so awesome. But here's the special sauce. We can add the lift and chop to other movement patterns to strengthen these diagonal systems in the context of other movement patterns. So I'll give you an example of what I mean by that. So one of the primary human movements is hip hinging, right? Usually people do deadlifting in a hip hinging pattern. Well, we don't have to just load it with something down here. We can actually load it with a lift and chop. So now, as I come down, I bring the bag out to the side. And as I come up, I bring the bag across. So here, I'm forcing those diagonal muscular slings to work together with all the muscles that are responsible for a hip pinch. And I can also do this in certain kinds of squats. So for example, I can come down here into a split squat or a Bulgarian squat. And now as I come up, the bag comes with me. And this one is actually super difficult. So here I'm teaching my legs and my abs to work together. So I'm challenging hip stability, core stability, and foot stability all at once. And similar to that, I can also use a lift and chop in a lunging pattern. So I'm going to come down to the bottom of my lunge. Now as I come up, I'm going to lift up and chop back down. So those are some great examples of how we can use lift and chops to challenge our core and our entire body in the context of other movement patterns. Ultimately, 
It's deficiencies inside these diagonal slings that lead to things like injury and inefficiency. So lifts and chops can really help us understand where our movement problems are and then fix them using progressively less and less stable environments. Hope you guys love this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.